So earlier this week, Adobe released the beta version of their artificial intelligence driven generative fill. And there's already a ton of videos that have been posted showing how to get it and how to use it. And I've added a link to one in the description by my friend Unmesh Dinder of Piximperfect. Now, as expected, there are folks who love it and there are folks who not so much, but I for one totally embrace it. So in this video, as a photographer, I thought I'd show you how I've been using it both practically and creatively on my own images. Some old ones and one very recent and one belonging to a friend that was completely ruined, but I was able to fix. Right, let's dive in. Okay, so this first image is a portrait I took of a farmer in South Wales and I recently shared this on my social media where it got lots of love and comments. But I did this as a bit of a test because you see, this isn't the original portrait that I took. And what was really interesting to me was that nobody mentioned about Adobe's AI when I posted it. Well, one person did jokingly ask if I'd added the dog in, but no, that was really there. Now this is the original portrait. So practically two thirds more has been added using generative fill in Photoshop. And this completely blows me away. Just incredible. And this is how easy it was to do. Obviously I'd finished editing the original portrait, which is here, but to add more, all I did was grab the crop tool and extend the side to about here. Then with the rectangular marquee tool, make a selection of the new area, making sure to overlap just a little into the original. Then in the contextual menu bar, clicked on generative fill and without adding any text prompts at all, just clicked on generate. Now this is real time, so you can see how long it takes for the AI to look at the contents of the portrait and start to pull together and build the new area on the side that matches, not just with the content, but the color, the shadows, the lighting, the whole thing. And this takes roughly 15 seconds, if that. Now it's finished, we have three results to choose from, but I think I'm going to go with the second one. Yeah, I think that looks best. I could of course click on generate again to get three more variations and keep doing that until I'm completely happy. Now though, let's do the other side. So I grab the crop tool and extend it outwards. Then make a selection with the rectangular marquee tool, making sure to overlap a little on the original and then press generative fill and generate. Again, the artificial intelligence looks at the image and then starts to think about what it needs to make to build this area and match the contents, the lighting, the color, and the shadows. And after a short while later, here is the result. One, I would have no issues displaying in my portfolio whatsoever because I posed, lit, and captured the portrait of the farmer. The rest is editing. This next picture is a portrait I took of my friend Nathan Black, which was taken in an old sports club and was composed like this because the flooring did not look good and I only had a background that was big enough to go behind him, not on the floor as well. But check this out. In Photoshop, I use the crop tool to extend the lower portion of the photo. Then with the rectangular marquee tool, make a selection of that new area overlapping just a little bit on the original picture and then click on generative fill and generate. Now this I find even more mind blowing because generative fill kind of knows that this is a stool. So it continues the legs so they're a bit longer, but then also adds in the bottom too. And there you go. I mean, come on, look at that. Incredible. It's continued the legs of the stool added the floor, but look at the lighting. It's actually matched the shadows on the legs to the lighting on Nathan coming in from the left. That is insane. Now there are other variations, this where the stool legs are even longer, and then there's this one where it has even added in extra cross sections on the stool. But my favorite out of the first three is the first one. I absolutely love this. But what Generative Phil was able to do in this next picture was just the best. A friend of mine gave me a photograph that was incredibly special to him. 
a picture of him, his wife and his children. He asked if there was any way I could fix it as it had stuck to the glass of the original frame it was in and when they'd taken it out, it had pulled off a chunk of the picture. Now I've blurred their faces out just for this video, but this here is the photograph he gave me. Now I desperately wanted to do this for my friend, but restoring photographs isn't something that I generally do until just a few days ago when Generative Fill was announced. So having scanned it, opened it in Photoshop, I then made a loose selection of the area to repair and just clicked on Generative Fill and Generate. And this is what it did. Now I have also cleaned the image up really quickly using the new Remove tool, which is incredible, and also adjusted the colours by diving into Camera Raw. I then enlarged the photo using Topaz Gigapixel, which I love, and then printed it. Now I know obviously there are people who specialise in restoring old or damaged photographs, but I'm not really one of them, it's not something that I generally do. I could have maybe spent hours searching stock photographs, looking for parts that I could blend in, but Generative Fill has meant that I could do this for my friend a lot quicker, and those prints are now in this box, ready to send. But now let's take a look at this one. So recently I organised a photo shoot with some friends where I was taking a portrait inspired by the Netflix poster for Seven Kings Must Die. The shoot was done at my friend Ian Munro's studio and I'd hired the clothing and would also arrange for a professional special effects and makeup artist to be joining us. She was fantastic, creating bruises and cuts on our friend Steve, who was modelling for the day. So when it comes to the editing side of things, here's a look at the main parts where I use the Generative Fill AI. First of all, changing the mouth. For that I just typed in angry and it threw back a load of mouths. I chose one and blended it including the cut that the special effects artist had originally created. Next I wanted more of the cuts and the blood. Now typing that in the text prompts threw back a warning about the user guidelines. Those guidelines set limitations to what all of this can be used for and you can read more about them simply by clicking on the warning. So after quite a few attempts with different words, I found that just typing scar worked pretty good. The hair though, this blew me away. I typed in shaved head, Mohican hair, pulled back ponytail. And this is what I got. You can see here all the variations too. Incidentally, if you save the file as a PSD, you get to keep it along with all of the variations as well, but it does increase the file size. I then added in another scar, and now Steve looked exactly how I wanted. And this is something the special effects artist wouldn't and couldn't have been able to do at the time. Now very soon I'm going to do a video going through all of the photo shoot and all of the editing, but for now, let me just show you the layers that I did manually. After using the Generative Fill AI, it was then all about doing dodging and burning, adding details, lighting effects, colour grading and adding the sparks. So that is the Generative Fill AI in the Photoshop beta, which I think is amazing. Oh, actually one more thing, I did remove this guitar from this picture. Now I was asked recently by a friend about my feelings about all of this AI stuff, and this is part of my reply. The creative side of what we do and what makes us individuals is in our minds. Our hands and the tools we have at our disposal are how we get that creativity from our heads into something that others can see. But what do you think? Right, that's all for this video. So as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click on subscribe because as you know, that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.